Good evening and welcome to the sixth session in our series entitled It's Not About Me. In this session our theme will be His Unchanging Hand. Uh, we will be confronted and comforted with the reality that although everything in our existence and experience in this life undergoes change, our great hope and security is that God is completely unchanging. Who He was is who He is and is who He will be. He is immutable, namely, He is in the solid state of not changing, and He is unable to be changed. But first, as always, please pause the video and take some time to discuss these three startup questions. I remember certain moments in my life when things changed and they were never the same again. Moments like going to grade 1, it changed my life forever. Another moment like my first real love that decided it's not her but me. A moment when in grade 12 I matriculated and were done with 12 years of school. And then that wonderful moment in, um, in 2002 when on an outreach in Mozambique, God came and saved me. And my life changed radically and was never the same after that. And then there came a moment where I had to choose between rugby and going into ministry. And, and that choice that changed my life. And then came the wonderful day of 1 October 2005, when I got married to the most amazing wife, um, Desiree. And my life has never been the same after that day. And then came that... Wonderful, scary, interesting time when I met this uh, Scottish English pastor uh, with the name of Pastor Ian Stewart. And I can honestly say my life has never been the same after that as well. And I became part of PNV in the ministry year. And life has never been the same. And then came those wonderful two dates in August and September when we got children, uh, two wonderful, beautiful daughters. And our lives have never been the same after that. Our lives changed again. When you got children. And then recently, last year, COVID-19 um, changed our lives and many of your lives. And things have not been the same since then. And the question would be, what next? What big change is coming next? You see, all things change. Weather, seasons, hairstyles, fashion, cell phones, technology, schools, families, bodies, friendships, people. We can go on and on. All things change regularly. The only things in this creation and life that maybe doesn't change is Darth Vader's face and Marilisa's face. That's the only things that doesn't change. Other than that, everything in this world changes. Now, all of us have ex has experienced change up until this point in our lives. And we will continue to experience change as long as we are alive. Change is part of this world. Now, change can leave us feeling excited anticipating something new and amazing. Sometimes you just can't wait for things to change. But other, ch other times, change can also leave you feeling scared and fearful, uns unsure and insecure, paralyzed and shaken, maybe even disillusioned. Many times we are left with a lot of questions when things change in our lives. We wonder why this has happened to us and why now? Sometimes we are left with the question, if there is anything certain in this life, something that will never change, that will always be the same, and that we can actually trust in completely. Now, remember the truth we have been talking about last week, namely, God is eternal. Not even God made God. He knows your beginning and your end because He has neither. Now, the truth that goes along with this, and that we will think about tonight, is this truth. God remains the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. Though life changes, He never does. Consider these verses in Psalm 102, verse 25 to 27. Of old you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will all wear out like a garment. 
You will change them like a robe and they will pass away. But you are the same and your years have no end. And also consider Hebrews 13 verse 8. A very well known verse concerning Jesus. And that he, because he is God, is unchanging, um, Im immutable. Um, Hebrews 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Now, see, to make sense of this unchanging world, we need to have God as our starting point because He never changes. In a chaotic world that is constantly changing, Nothing is more comforting than to know there is a God who never changes. Change is always threatening to us. Whether it is a child who graduates from elementary school where he has been king of the hill and has to go to a school where older children intimidate the new arrivals, or the aged pensioner who has to leave the home where she has lived for many years to take up residence in a care facility. There is one, however, who never changes. That thought both blesses and terrifies. The Bible tells us God is unchanging. If you are God's child, that thought should bring comfort to your heart. No one in his right mind would deny the fact that our generation has seen more changes in a given period of time than any other generation in all history. Seasons change. Nations rise and fall, men rise to power and are pushed aside, but God remains the same. God himself said, I am the Lord, I change not. The Bible says he is the father of lights with whom there is no change or variation. This means God will never be less than he is now or ever be different from what he has already revealed himself to be in the past. His essential being, we call those characteristic attributes, are always the same. This includes the fact that he is with neither beginning nor end. He is not only unchanging, but is just, all-knowing, all-powerful, ever-present, holy, faithful, and loving. God is also unchanging in his faithfulness to us, in his wisdom and his counsel. In an old song seldom heard today, written by Thomas Chisholm, there's a line that goes, Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. As A.W. Tozier put it, God never changes moods or cools off in his affections or loses enthusiasm. His attitude towards sin is now the same as it was when he drove out the sinful man from the eastward garden and his attitude toward the sinner, the same as when he stretched forth his hand and cried, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. No wonder Henry Light wrote, Change and decay all around I see, thou who changes not abide with me. Let us then spend some time tonight in answering this question. In what ways are God unchanging? Now, here is then three things in which God is completely unchanging. Namely, number one, God is unchanging in His essential characteristics. With all respect said, we need to know about God, that God has no mood swings. He is completely constant and perfect in all of His characteristics at all times. His love Grace and mercy never changes or even fluctuates. He is always good and does what is good. Think of James 1 verse 17, where James writes, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Psalm 119 verse 68 so just simply states the truth. God is good and does good. Teach me your statutes. You see, God is always good. He cannot be no, nothing less than good. He always does what is good. He cannot do anything less than that. 
Then further, His wisdom, power, justice and holiness never changes. There is never a time in which God is more powerful or less powerful, in which He is more wise or less wise, in which He is more holy or less holy or more just or less just. No, He is, he is completely perfectly holy and powerful, just and, and, and wise in everything that He does. He is also always in control. He knows what is best and He does what is right. God is unchanging in any of these things. You see, to, to simply state it like this, God is completely faithful and His faithfulness will never lessen. Think of um, Lamentations 3, verse 22 to 23, where um, Jeremiah um, thinks on these, this reality about God and how it encourages him that God is faithful and that He can never be less than faithful. In Lamentations 3, verse 22 to 23, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And also this well-known verse in 2 Timothy 2, verse 13, where we see that God is actually the exact opposite of us when it comes to being faithful. 2 Timothy 2, verse 13 says, If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself, namely who he is. God is unchanging in his essential characteristics. God is um, what he is and who he is, and he can never change. He himself has said, I am what I am. In all things that happens in this world and in your life, God is. God is loving. God is righteous. God is merciful, He is holy, He is gracious, He is just, He is sovereign, He is faithful. God is all that He is, all of the time. And here, here are two applications based on this first truth that God is unchanging in essential characteristics that must encourage you if you are a believer in Christ. In all circumstances in your life, in all, that, all the changes that are happening, if you belong to this God that is unchanging, you can know this. He is perfect in His love. And He wants what is best for you. And number two, He is unlimited in His wisdom. And He knows what is best for you. This is all based on the fact that God is unchanging in His essential characteristics. The second thing in which God is unchanging, number two, God is unchanging in His perfect plan. God has a plan uh, for this world. And He is busy accomplishing it and He will accomplish it. God is able to declare the end from the beginning, as He says in Isaiah 46 verse 10, because He has planned it all from the beginning. I love what these verses says about God, um, what God is about God doing what He has planned. Um, in Psalm 33, verse 10 to 11, we read where the psalmist says this about God and about His counsel standing and the counsel of the nations coming to nothing. Psalm 33, verse 10 and 11. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of His heart to all generations. Also in Isaiah 14, verse 27, where we read how God decided, decided to use one nation to punish another nation because He can. He is the Lord of hosts, meaning He is the Lord of all the nation's armies. He uses whichever army He wants to at any given time to go against whichever nation He decides. And Isaiah 14, verse 27, in that context, God says, For the Lord of hosts has purposed, and who will annul it? His hand is stretched out, and who will turn it back? God does what He pleases because He is unchanging in His perfect plan. And we see something of this as well in Daniel 4, verse 35, where King Nebuchadnezzar has exalted himself. He has become proud in his heart and exalted himself to say, Well, all that I have done is because of me. And then God humbled him. And then after he was humbled, God restored him. And then Nebuchadnezzar said this, in Daniel 4, verse 35, All the inhabitants of the earth are accounted as nothing, 
and he, God, does according to his will among the host of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say to him, what have you done? You see, God is unchanging his perfect plan and therefore he works it out. He does it. And no one can stay his hand. No one can annul what he said. No one can bring his counsel to nothing. To say, maybe you can state it like this. What God does in time, he planned from eternity. And all that he planned in eternity, he carries out in time. His plan, born in eternity, will withstand any attack of humanity. Think of that psalm, Psalm 2. Um, psalm 2 verse 1 to 4, where this psalm is about um, the nations trying to stand up against God and His anointed. And now God just laughs at them. Listen to Psalm 2 verse 1 to 4. Why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Only a fool will think that he can change or try and stop the plan of God. When it comes to the plan of God, you and I need to understand it is unchanging. Because God is unchanging. He has this perfect plan and He will work it out. When it comes to those of us who are saved... God will complete what He has started because His plan is unchanging and He will do what He has planned. That is why Philippians 1 verse 6 is such an encouraging verse for every believer. Philippians 1 verse 6, And I'm sure of this, that He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. More recently, this psalm, Psalm 57, verse 2, has become such a great encouragement for me. It's, it says the same thing, where the psalmist remembers who God is. And he says in Psalm 57, verse 2, I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills His purpose for me. That speaks of God's eternal plan, a perfect plan that is unchanging. Also, Psalm 138, verse 8, which is basically the Old Testament equivalent of Philippians 1, verse 6, that read as follows. Psalm 138, verse 8. The Lord will fulfill His purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. You see, God governs everything according to the story that He has written. Now, that story that he has written has already been written and it cannot and will not be changed. His story is what we call history. History is nothing other than showing us how perfect God's plan is and how unchanging is God's perfect plan. God really has a perfect plan and he is busy doing it and it will never change. And therefore, applying it to us as believers, here's a third application that we can make based on God being unchanging. In all circumstances of your life, in all the changes that are happening, if you belong to this God who has a perfect plan and is unchanging, you can know this. God is completely sovereign and, and that He is doing what is best for you. And so the three points of application so far, He is perfect in His love and wants what is best for you. He is unlimited in His wisdom and He knows what is best for you. And God is completely sovereign and He is doing what is best for you. All because of that He is unchanging in His essential characteristics and also in His perfect plan. And then a third thing in which God is completely unchanging. Number three, God is unchanging in His revealed truth. God has revealed Himself to us through nature general revelation, and then through the Bible, God's special revelation. Everything that God says in the Bible is completely unchanging because it is the truth. Truth can never change. One plus one will always be two. 
under all circumstances, in all ages of this world, one plus one will be two. Truth can never change. And the Bible is the truth. In John 17, verse 17, Jesus prayed this. Jesus prayed, Father, sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. God's word is the truth. We also then read in Isaiah 40, verse 6 to 8, this truth concerning God's word. Isaiah 40, verse 6 to 8. A voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass wither, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Also, in Mark 13, verse 21. In, con in context, Jesus is teaching his disciples about the end times and certain signs that will come in the end. And then in Mark 13, verse 31, Jesus makes this declaration. In Mark 13, verse 31. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. God's revealed word, his words, is unchanging. The Bible is the truth because it is God's word. God said it, and what he said, he will surely do. And Numbers 23 verse 19 says it in the following way. Numbers 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should change his mind. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken and he will not fulfill it? You see, every promise that God has made, he will fulfill. But also, every threat and warning that God has made, he will fulfill. God is unchanging in his revealed truth, both his promises and his warnings and in his judgments. And so here is an application of this first point, namely God is unchanging his revealed truth. Here's two points of application. If you are a Christian, this should encourage you to build your life on his word and to hold on to his promises. Psalm 119 verse 89 says this. Psalm 119 verse 89. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. And that's why you and I as Christians should build our life on this word. It is God's truth and it will never change. In no circumstances, not even in 2021, will God's word change. And so if you're a Christian, build your life on God's unchanging truth. But secondly, if you are not a Christian, you should be warned by this that God will do what he has threatened to do. You see, Galatians 6, verse 7 to 8, gives us this sobering verse, a sobering thought. Galatians 6, verse 7 to 8. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. God has warned us as well in Hebrews 10, verse 26 up until verse 31. He has warned us. And if you are an unbeliever, if you are professing to know Jesus, but walking in open blatant sin, hear the warning of Hebrews 10, verse 26 to 31. For if we go on sinning deliberately, after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and the fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think will be deserved by the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has outraged the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, and again the Lord will judge his people. 
It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. God is unchanging in His revealed truth. What He has promised, He will do. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ will be forgiven of their sin. They will be justified. They will right standing with God. But anyone who rejects the Son of God, Jesus Christ the Lord, they will be under His wrath. And it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. If you don't know Jesus, hear the good news. Here is the truth. Here is the gospel. The gospel is that there is this infinite, almighty, all-knowing, all-powerful creator God who created all things for his glory. And you and I have belittled that, belittled his name, belittled his glory. Every one of us have at one time or another, or actually currently, believe that our way is better than God's. We fail to acknowledge, give him glory for the gifts he's given us. We question his rule and his authority, while at the same time doing that with the brain he gave us and holds together, and the lungs and the air that he gave us to breathe with. This is the great blasphemy of the universe. So we've all belittled God, and God being just right and holy is not going to allow the belittlement of his name. God then, not being able to spare wrath, sends Christ in the flesh and crushes him. And in so doing, pours out his wrath against the children of God onto the Son, killing him. Then God raises him from the dead. And that same power that raised Christ from the dead is now at work in those who would believe. This is the gospel. That you and I have right standing before God. Not by our efforts, not by our works, not by our skill, not by whether or not we cuss or don't cuss, drink or don't drink, watch this, don't watch this, do this, don't do that. Justified before God by the cross of Christ alone. Your lust... You're not going to be able to fix it. Your bitterness, you're not going to be able to fix it. Your rage, anger, those deviances that have been following you around, you don't possess the power of life and death. You can't resurrect anything. Christ can. That's the good news. That's why we don't celebrate us. That's why we continually celebrate Him. We boast in the cross and the cross alone, the same power that is at work in raising Christ from the dead, that work in me and work in all who believe. This is the gospel. God's glorious gospel starts with God. God is the righteous creator. God created us to glorify Him and to know Him. We stand accountable before Him for what we have done because we belong to Him. He will judge our words and actions with righteousness. Man is the terrible sinner. Man has rebelled against God for being disobedient to that which God has commanded. That is to sin against God. And because of our sin, we are lost and under the judgment and wrath of God and deserve to go to hell. We all have sinned and are slaves of sin. But Jesus Christ is the wonderful Savior. Jesus Christ is the Son of God who became man and walked on this earth. He lived a perfect life of obedience and then died on the cross to take our punishment upon Him. And He rose from the dead to free us from the slavery of sin. He is the only Savior. And without knowing Him, no one can enter into God's kingdom. What is the required reaction from us? Repent and belief. You need to trust in Jesus by placing your faith in Him, that He has died for your sin on the cross, and that He alone can save you from hell. You must repent of your sin by asking God to forgive you and to trust God to change you so that you can obey Him through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Only those who have been born again can know God. And those who know Him know that He is the truly unchanging one, that he is the faithful one.
Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, in a world that is so rapidly changing day by day, we are so thankful that you are unchanging in who you are. You are unchanging in your plan. And your word is absolutely steadfast and will never change. I pray, help us to trust in you. Help us to know that you are our God. And that by trusting in Jesus Christ, you promise that you save us. For those who know you, Father, help us to trust in your love and your wisdom and your sovereignty. To know that you want what is best for us. You know what is best for us. And that you are bringing about what is best in all the changes that we are experiencing. Thank you that although this world will change, you will never change. We worship you and thank you for that. Amen. Amen.